Hello, good morning, selamat pagi. So welcome to day three, the first session of the day. And it's uh, by Mayantara, Yak ID 2021. It's a live virtual design interior festival. It's a collaborative event hosted by HDII Jakarta and also by Mayantara. So thank you for joining everyone. My name is Naila, I am a member of HDII Jakarta and now involved on programs for year 2019 and until 2022. And HDII is a professional organization uh, representing interior designer in Indonesia. Also here is Rina Renfield. Hi Rina. She's the head or she's the chairperson of this organization. Good morning, Rina. Morning, Benayla. Morning, everyone. So this session is about using technology and design to build human-centric spaces, and it is presented by Vega Technology. So we would like to thank you, Pat Melvin from Vega Indonesia, and Matthew Eaton from Hong Kong, from Vega Global Deputy CEO, and responsible for the running and growth of the business globally. Uh, hi, Matthew. So. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Thank you for joining. Can you please introduce Figa Technology a bit? Sure. Let me just share my screen. So good morning, everyone. Um, as uh, Nalia said, my name is Matthew Dayton, and I am the Deputy CEO of Vega Global. And I'm based here in Hong Kong, which is our head office. 
So first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to Nalia and the HDI team for giving Vega the opportunity to support this Mayantara event. We have an excellent list of panelists who will be presenting to you this morning on a topic that I think is of keen interest to all businesses, as technology has definitely become a key enabler for the modern workspace um, to function effectively. So just to give you a little bit of background about Vega and where we sit in, sit in the market, we are a, a, a leading technology specialist and we um, specialize in providing technology solutions that focus on unified communications, collaboration, and enabling digital workspaces. We have over 18 offices throughout the Asia, sorry, 16 offices throughout the Asia Pacific region. Um, we have, um, well, 20 offices in, in 16 countries, I'm sorry. We have over 600 staff. Um, we have worked with over 20,000 clients and uh, delivered well over um, 100,000 projects. And Vega has been operate, in operation for um, 35 years now, um, focused in the Asia Pacific region. And you'll see from the next slide, the, uh, the, the global footprint that we have, or the Asia Pacific footprint that we have um, with uh, all of our offices um, located there. And on the, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see some of the key um, unique selling points or key differentiators that, that Vega has um, when we deliver our services to the market. We, we um, design and, and deliver all of our solutions um, to uh, global standards. Um, because we have offices in all the Asian, major Asian cities, we have sort of a very strong focus on being able to speak the local language as well as communicate in English. Um, and that's a conversational level and a technical level. Um, we like to be able to deliver standardized services across the spectrum of our offices to ensure that our clients are getting a unified um, experience when they're working with us. We have deep technical knowledge. Uh, we have the ability to transact and work with our clients in all of the countries across Asia Pacific. Uh, we do definitely see ourselves as a, a market leader um, in, in our industry, um, and we also can provide our multinational clients with a single vendor experience across um, all of the uh, cities in, and countries in Asia. At this point, I'm going to hand over to uh, my colleague, uh, Melvin, I think who is the next speaker, or Nali will introduce um, Melvin as the next speaker. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Matthew. So let me introduce all the speakers first. So we have three speakers today. So the first one is Melvin Alpito. He's the country manager of Vega Indonesia. Hello, Hi, Melvin. Hi, hey, Wu. <laughs> so Hi, Wu. Uh, Melvin joined Vega Technology in Indonesia 2016. He started the operation of Vega Indonesia and growing his team and client base over the years. He has led Vega Indonesia to successful, successful projects and global accounts. Uh, today, Melvin's topic is about space technology. Uh, after that, it's a continuous uh, presentation. Hadley will discuss about human-centric trends in everyday techno technology. So Heather is plays a key role in Vega corporate digital workplace solutions across Asia Pacific and the Middle East. And with 20 years of client side experience, give her the leverage to take on the challenge of delivering innovative digital workplace solution. Hi, Heather. And the last one, but this one is Steven Shah from AIDAS Singapore, AIDAS Interior Singapore. And for the past decade, uh, Steven has been the executive principal of AIDAS Singapore, uh, the interior division, overseeing a team of designers, head the design process and client edition. So his work in Indonesia, is including Unilever's headquarters and Pricewaterhouse and in World Trade Center too, and Hutchinson Tree Indonesia, which is currently under construction in Capital Place. And Stephen's presentation is about our topic today is using technology and design to build human-centric spaces. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> yes. And after the presentation, we will connect all three speakers, and we will discuss further about the main topic. After that, will be the Q&A session. So please feel free to ask. So there is like a button below 
it's a Q and A button. And please ask uh, and just write your question and we'll answer later on. Okay, so thank you. Please Melvin, maybe you can start your presentation and share your screen. Let me try to share my screen. Yes, good. We can see it. Okay, that's good. Hi everyone, good morning. I hope everyone here enjoying the, the morning, uh, just like us, uh, preparing all the slides this morning for like uh, half an hour before we start this uh, 9 a.m. So please allow me to uh, to start the presentation and allow me to intrigue your intellectual and challenge your status quo and uh, your ideas of better living. Hi, my name is Melvin Hapito. Uh, I'm country major for Vega Technology in Asia. Please allow me to talk about a space technology that will influence the space. Next slide. So data, how, how data or information is stored influence people in space. People used, people used to store the data in the office and have to go to the office to get the data and process the data. Now they need just to, to have an internet connection, connect to the cloud and get the data they need. No more space for huge data centers or server. No more space for a huge uh, filing rack, just a laptop will do the rest. And how people interact influence the space. People used to, to need to exchange papers in the office, sign the papers, chop and deliver. Not anymore now. Even banks now recognize the digital signature. People used to spend hours on telephone, sit in the office, the whole day just to make at least 10 to 10 calls just to make one strategic decision not anymore now we have uh, microsoft teams whatsapp group zoom etc we have working collaboration people used to use the meeting room to open the discussion to discuss a problem and spend hours for the discussion now the preliminary discussion will be performed in unified communication and collaboration tools such as Microsoft Teams, and use the meeting room to formalize the decision. They used to have big, big meeting rooms to be able to cater the, the whole staff. Now, the discussion is performed by clusters. In six to, uh, four to six packs, collaboration areas. Uh, and how the data or information is shared influence the space. They used to make big. Uh, they used to make big meetings to have announcement that requires huge space just for some announcement. Now what they need is just a group of group email address or digital signage in the reception or in the in front of the lift. They used to have the information board to share what is the HR program or marketing program. Now what they need is just HRR. Uh, human resources information system application. No more in efficient way of promoting information. How data or information input influence the space. They used to calculate the number of cubicle. Uh, they used to, to calculate the number of cubicle equals to the number of the staff. Not anymore now. They have hot seats because not all the staff required to come to the office to be productive. They can do their work in Starbucks, coffee beans, or anywhere. We are seeing more and more spaces is reduced in corporate office in order to meet the efficiency. It's achieved by implementing the right technology. The goal is, to make people interaction exchange of information can will can be well performed and flexible. And the focus is is how to make the process of human interaction and data or information exchange is done effectively, efficiently, flexible, and don't forget fun. Right? That's that's the fun part. Fun. 
So why do we talk about this? Because technology and space design, design strengthen each other. Human has a very, com a very complex brain, which is hosted by trillions of neurons. Human needs something that is con continuous changes. They get bored easily. This is, where, this is why the space design needs to be always innovative, fresh, comforting, balanced, and intriguing. As we talk about human, they have many sensors that need to be pampered. Vision, hearing, smell, touch, and taste. Successful design is to consider uh, to try to win all those sensors, or at least some of the some of them that is possible. So we are in Vega, we are in Vega continuously opening up the study and discussion how the architectural design and interior design can be enhanced by technology, or probably how the technology can affect the design architecture or interior. So we think and we believe that this study can enhance the concept and the value of the shape and space. For example, reception area, meaning need to be majestic, attractive as the wall factor of the company, where we should think about the nice style, wall, light, color, and etc. Don't forget about the nice reception lady who will be always smile for you and help you with the designated room. It is the face of the company that we need to build, create, and maintain. But what about the easiness and practicality? How about providing automated system for registration, pre-registration pre pre system, room booking system, wayfinding system, and etc. It also helped the company to show that they treasure the, the visited time to help them to be organized, well-prepared, easy, flexible, and fun. Another example will be the meeting room. Big meeting room. Uh, part of the productivity is where the decision can be made in effect, uh, effective and efficient way. The main purpose for meeting room is a place to make decision or decisions. Many times we see marathon meetings that are endless. We are unable to gather the whole team in the same time, or we just can't divine or identify the problem during the meeting. So we can't have an effective or efficient discussion. So the question is, do we need a big conference room with sophisticated AV system to cater all the people at the same time for a, work, a weekly conference? Every week, or what we need is only just a number of collaboration area with unified communication and collaboration collaboration system installed in the room in the area. So, what is it all about? It's all about user experience, where everything has to be effective. Efficient, flexible, fun, comfortable, and enjoyable. So the question is, the technology has driven people to do things differently. Things constantly changes. One thing that is for sure in this, in this world is change. All things that we known yesterday might not be applicable now. The reason is because somebody out there, somebody out there, is smart enough to think out the, a new way of doing things that is better uh, that, uh, than what we have now. And how they do it, many times it's because they are intrigued by a small discussion or a study like today we are having right now. So technology has driven people to do things differently. So how to define the formula to design the space that is influenced by technology for better user experience? That's the question. So what, what is the principles? Principles of the new world, where there is people, place, technology. People need to be flexible, productive, and flexible. 
people want to be able to be anywhere but still productive place is no longer to be the reason for people can be productive they are not attached to to a place to space it's not only the era of virtual space where can where, where can store files information money or even attend a virtual meeting room technology is all that requires uh, to achieve all those flexibility and capability can be achieved with the, with the right technology so the idea is space technology let's call it space technology and now we would like to call it space technology where everything is easy and joyful for people to connect where everything is easy and joyful for people to share and exchange information people to enjoy the color the pattern the shape point of interest where people is easy and joyful to to do their activities people to get useful to get useful and important information and the list continues so why is it interesting to discuss because space technology can help to design the workspace strategy for business space technology can help to create new interest, interesting uh, space design space technology can make more effective and efficient design with the help of technology this is where design meets purpose through technology what are the principles functional flexible effective and efficient balanced connective uh, connected informative secure organized and the list continues the quest are how to find the right system uh, that is fit for purpose and how far the system can support the space space design and shape and how we can formulate the current and future working arrangement this is the quest that we are uh, uh, doing right now so space technology more discussions we will talk more about space technology if you stick around on the next session i will see you again after the next session good night la muted okay thanks melvin uh thank you because yes now it's not about as us in the design is not about designing and then after that the technology the av or the information the it and communication comes later so what you're saying now is that we need to coordinate beforehand we need also to advise the client that there is a new technology it will affect our space it will affect the function and um so it's more like if i see here from your uh, presentation is that let's talk about technology together with the design from the beginning of the project with the client also yeah. okay thanks melvin thank you now heather it's her turn her turn it's more about detailed so and it's more about what melvin is talking before but we can see it for with more details with the with all her new gadget her new you know te technical and all that that can be shown uh, in this presentation so heather please go ahead thank you bunana hello everyone uh thank you so much for joining this session today um i'm today my section is going to talk about uh, how technology can be integrated into a space or when it comes to, uh, you know, our interior designers thinking about the space, how we can um, put that together. Um, so without further ado, let me start. So I think what we're seeing a lot these days is, um, you know, people have been asking what has changed uh, since COVID. Um, but I think what we are seeing and how the market, when I say the market, I'm talking about on our client side and also uh, our industry as well as our peers, 
um, we are seeing that technology is now integrated into uh, one, um, one, kind, one element. Uh, we're no longer seeing that our oh, AV is just an AV, IT is IT and IoT is an IoT. We're seeing now uh, the changing uh, solution is incorporated into IT infrastructure, AV and IoT. What you're seeing in front of you is um, the AV part of the office, um, the digital signage and digital screen and display um, is very well mature in this market. But we are also now seeing the incorporation of the EIT infrastructure, which is the uh, everything that is behind the computer room uh, is now also playing a very key important part. And most importantly, it is now driven um, more on a software platform. So when, when with that in mind, we're seeing that we can't just provide a solution alone uh, in response to uh, what's happening to the workspace and designing the space. We must see the, uh, the incorporation of the IT infrastructure, the AV part, and coming uh, into uh, and advancing is all the IoT, so motion sensors, room booking, desk booking system, cloud solutions, uh, BIM and BMS. Um, so that's, uh, at Vega, that's what we look to do to offer when we're looking at a solution, we're looking the entire package. So let's have a look at what are some of the advanced screens uh, technology in the AV world? So we are seeing more than just screens on the wall these days in the office. We're seeing that incorporating into um, a development of building uh, a billboard. Um, you know, remember, not sure you, some of you may be too young, but uh, you know, if you remember Back to the Future, um, there's a, uh, a, a, a scene where there's shark uh was uh um you know coming as part of the uh advertisement now you're seeing that this is a reality um you know with the naked eye 3d screen uh, we're seeing that uh, imagery is uh more advanced than uh ever before uh we've got the stick on led where we can help to um uh be flexible and scalable into many different space um, so we have the infinity war as well. So you're seeing that this is more than just a, uh, a screen display for content and information. It is more incorporated into our everyday life that we might not uh, realized. So another element that we're looking at the moment, which is a solution that we're working in conjunction with another furniture supplier is that we're integrating uh, stick on LED uh, into a glass panel. So often in the past where we have uh, partition walls where once it's collapsed, it's, um, it's just a, a plain wall, but we're now seeing that client wants their space to do, do more than just uh, multi-purpose. They want it to be used for displaying information, uh, company branding, communication, and things like that into the front of house uh, design. So you're seeing that this is only one of the rendering reference. Uh, the real life is uh, will be implemented in India where there will be a screen uh, display of information at the same time uh, once the petition is closed, but when it's open, obviously that space is uh, multi-purpose to be used for many different things. We're also seeing that uh, running town hall these days uh, may be a bit tricky with uh, after COVID. Um, so we're seeing that our client and our uh, organizations um, have asked to uh, repurpose their meeting space. Um, so this is a actual uh, use case uh, we recently completed in Japan for one of our client uh, is transforming that space into a studio. Uh, this broadcasting studio is fitted with um, a good sound system, professional recording cameras, uh, remote, uh, so wireless presentation, uh, ceiling mic, uh, in audio conferences. So uh, senior executive or uh, company uh, employees wants to communicate and conduct meetings um, without having everyone in the room. This can now be recorded 
uh, and then replay um, many times. Uh, often we also seen that sales, uh, some of the sales team is using this to, uh, pro you, uh, to record their own uh, promotional sales video uh, within the company. So what's happening after uh, with companies is now looking to return to the office. Uh, we've heard a lot of uh, terminology around uh, hybrid space, flexible working, and things like that. So we're seeing companies uh, slowly, uh, employees is returning back to the office. And we also seeing that space has uh, re been reduced and repurposed into more collaboration uh, space. So with that in mind, desk scheduling system is one of the key implementation that we're also seeing across uh, Asia Pacific, uh, US and the uh, Europe market. So this is one of the platform um, that Vega uh, offer as part of the solution. Uh, this IWMS allows a user to pre-book their desk uh, or their room uh, prior to uh, coming back to the office. So they guarantee a desk um, and I've got a video to show you how that works later. Uh, this also gives you an idea of the 3D uh, floor plan. So you know what desk in green is bookable or space. Uh, in red, they are the uh, space that is already been booked or uh, is already been uh, previously administered so that uh, to comply with social distancing, uh, those desks uh, has already been um, recorded unbookable. So we also seeing that with this such platform, there's many different features, social distancing, cleaning on demand, uh, contact tracing. You can also even request service, uh, IT service, uh, catering uh, and cleaning and things like that. And most importantly, uh, the platform allows uh, a record of information so that can be, so the facility team and management team can use the analytic uh, for, uh, for the operation uh, later on. So more on the hardware integration, obviously I just show you the software, the hardware integration uh, has many functionalities, uh, but at the same time, uh, we have the desk signage display. So you see the name of the person who booked the desk, um, or you can choose to uh, choose one that you can charge the phone at the same time. So let me play you a video on how this works in real life.
so with that example, hope um, it gives you an idea of how seamless the process is for a user end user experience. And this is what Melvin and Bernala was talking about. How we integrate technology into a space uh, is, is, should be is, uh, e easy and simple to use for our users. So you can see that the lady had checked in and checked out. And then once she checked out, a message is sent to the facility team um, uh, and a cleaner came to clean the desk. And when uh, the cleaner had confirmed that the desk is clean, uh, the desk is ready to be used again. So let me share uh, just a few more slides around how some of the smart tech office is happening these days in our hybrid workplace. So what we're seeing is hybrid workplace is meeting people anywhere, anytime. Space um, defined, what we're seeing is defined as your primary location to do productive work is now spread across um, a different uh, remote site. So some, of, some organization have looked at satellite offices. Um, most importantly, the introduce, introduction of home office uh, is now another place uh, to do productive work. So with that in mind, we are seeing that the integration of IoT uh, is becoming more important. So the air quality monitoring, uh, climate control lighting and air con uh, from your mobile phone that can be done, uh, understanding where the lift status is, um, waste management, so smart bin monitoring uh, and reporting, uh, community portal, which is an integrated platform that you can communicate with users, um, CCTV with facial recognitions, uh, and also smart washroom monitoring and control. These are all IoT integrated solutions can be in, into uh, can be integrated into one single platform, and this is all about monitoring and supporting the operation and health and wellness of the employee. So one of the uh, future that we will see more and more of this is the uh, future of AI and edge, with edge computing. So machine learning is one of the key elements uh, of that. An example of, uh, of the machine learning that we use every day is uh, you probably all heard of Alexa and Google Assist. Um, so they are uh, algorithm that runs behind the scene that learn about the words that you use. Uh, in this case, for this particular slide here, the camera is uh, running an algorithm that can understand uh, how many people is uh, in the meeting room. So the camera is adjust accordingly uh, based on uh, the number of participants in the room. Another IoT sensor that we see a lot these days is the integration of um, occupancy sensors. Um, big corporations are now looking at measuring the space, uh, really understanding how, uh, this, how the space is being used and how often it's being used. Uh, this again, with this statistics, statistics and analytic, we will, will help, will help uh, organization to think about how they can uh, repurpose and reuse their space. So health and wellness is one of those items that is now being uh, highly on the agenda of uh, many organizations when they're looking at the space. And one of them is past COVID, uh, we, uh, companies is looking at implementing a solid visitor management system. So people can register uh, the, uh, when they come, when they visit a, a location. Uh, with that, they will get an email uh, before they arrived, uh, it's multilingual, um, is, um, is self check-in, check-out uh, using the barcode uh, technology uh, to support the seamless process. Another one that we also see in these days is the uh, AI surveillance systems, uh, which is again coming back to what we talked about, the AI and edge computing with this particular CCTV is recording the human behavior. And with deep machine learning analytic, it can, it can recognize uh, potential danger uh, of a person and how they behave. Uh, um, so let's say if you have your arms up for more than five seconds, um, the machine is automatically sent an alert um, to uh, the, the security team, just so that they know that there could be uh, someone's in danger. 
And another one that we're also seeing a lot is the um, uh, what we call uh, VR uh, virtual personal China. Uh, this is a, a one of the technology that we have used in one of the high end luxury apartment complex. Um, it is used to um, give people a chance to exercise in the office space without buying heavy gym equipment. So um, people can uh, follow a set of uh, exercise, um, you know, uh, to, to then uh, do some movement within the office. Um, and then it will also record um, the number of um, uh, uh, energy that you have burned uh, and how you perform. And, you know, it also recognize that next time when you do your exercise, it, it will help and give you some suggestions uh, as to what you can uh, do um, to get yourself moving in the office. And last but not least, um, since we're on the topic of smart technology, I thought I'll, I'll include one about uh, servicing robots. You probably heard of many robots before. Uh, you know, some of them is social robots. Um, these social robots sometimes tend to just ask you, do you like, uh, how was your experience? You know, please rate um, or give you direction. But this particular one is to do another function. This servicing robot is to uh, disinfect an area. Um, we call it the dark night because with obviously with UVC lighting uh, still uh, deemed to be dangerous to human. So it can only come out at night. Um, and you can pre-schedule this machine um, let's say between 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And during this time, this machine will uh, cover your office space uh, and clean and disinfect your area. Um, it will uh, recognize that uh, within one to six meter, you, they can detect uh, a moving object, um, a human or um, an animal. Um, it will uh, automatically stop um, as well. So once it's completed, it will send a schedule and a completion a report back to the facility team. So they know it's done. So with that, um, Ibu, over to you. And thank you very much for giving me this chance to uh, share some information. Ibu, I think you're on mute. Again, on mute. Okay, thanks, Heather. So thank you. Um, it's really interesting. And but there is always one. I want to say something here. It's about the videos. It's all about the millennials and technology. What about us, the old generation? We have to know about that, right? So this is not something that we can say. Oh, that's for the young. But this is for everyone in the office. The old, the young, the millennials. Uh, the management and who else is that they have to know about this new technology because we're going to go through that every day and um for me it's more like um it should be easy easy to use easy to explain and also how we can um coordinate each other with that system so that we don't say oh i don't understand about that i don't understand about this and then go to the old ways so this is maybe something that, that needs to say that it's not about how you can um, sell to the client, but also how they can use easily. But also what I see is that about your uh, studio, the green room, this is something that we have done really in few of our project because it's about marketing, communication. It's also about social media and, and they need to do that every day sometimes. So, that room is something that's not like additional now. It's something that is needed for some of our companies. So yes, we are there. We're going there. So yes. But now, um, it's not only now and the future. Stephen is uh, going to talk about the history and also to know the past. So please, Stephen, can you start your presentation and share your Uh, what's not now, but also the future. Anything can happen, right? Heather, Melvin, and Stephen. But um, let me let me ask about. There is like two points that I understand from Stephen' um, presentation is to about how to establish better connection 
face to face rather than virtually and how to bridge the gap. The other one that uh, I think we need to discuss is about how people use and react to the space that we create, how people, use, how people um, react to the, te the, to the new technology that's, got, that's coming. And also uh, to look, uh, is it done well? Is it something that needs to be revised? And, and what, what's going to happen in the future? So with this in mind, I want to go straight to Stephen and ask about, we see the video, we see the image. And, but you're like stopping there. So I'm asking you really, what do you think? What, what do you think about, um, about this now? We saw the technology and you say human. Maybe we can go further about this, discuss about what do you think should be? Well, you know, I think the problem is uh, like so many things, there's no one answer. And so when we're designing te technology or uh, I'll put it a different way, when we're trying to integrate technology into spaces for people, it's really trying to figure out what sort of environment or experience should that be. So if you looked at that global bank, that was very much, they wanted this sci-fi experience. We were almost even making it theatrical that when you got out of the lift, so we, there were six lifts in this building. We did up one lift because they couldn't afford to do up all six lifts. So one lift was program, VIP arrives, they get in that lift. There was a whole experience as they come up. They came out, they were security. We were even talking about you know, a fog machine that you know, there would be this mist and the door would open and you'd walk in. So that's one way to deal with it when you need a bit of theater. Um, the other side of it is when you really want places for people to interact. So how do we create that? Right now, we've got lots of little screens on walls. And yet, I think if we really want the interaction with people, with groups, and Cisco originally tried to do that with their um, conferencing rooms where you basically split it down the middle as if there was a mirror. And when you bought the kit, it wasn't just the screens, but it was the furniture, the chairs, uh, the lighting, you know, everything had to be as if it was a mirror image to give you the illusion that you were in one room. It never quite worked. Maybe if we had the LED walls that we have today, that might make it a little bit more um, seamless that you would feel that, yes, this is really people on the other side of the room. Maybe it's holograms that we'll get to at some point, but I don't know. Um, maybe call me old fashioned. I'd much rather be face to face. I'd much rather come into the office when I'm doing things. And I think the other thing that we're forgetting with all this technology about oh, I can work from home, I can work anywhere, is that there are some things that work better face to face. We can't share coffee uh, virtually. Yes, it's been done. I've had virtual cocktail parties um, where we're toasting. I attended a virtual wedding where you know there was a tea ceremony. But I think we've got to think about how do we make a workplace, if that's what we're talking about, that people feel comfortable with. And as you said, the technology is intuitive. I don't need lots of training. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, maybe I can add upon that also, is that everything that we saw is about screens, but in our work as interior designer, when we were before the pandemic, we were like asking the client to come to see the fabric, the material, show them boards, you know, like 3D image and so on. It's not about like one, you only need to see the 3D, but the overall of the project. Is it possible, for instance, to have like something like, and you're saying before, Heather, that you had the AI to, to have the movement of people. Maybe we can do like, we're in a room and then we're like talking to the client, this is the material, this is the material board, this is the 3Ds. In one session, you know, that like, like the camera is moving. I think this is something also that will help the, you know, the connecting to the client, they see us uh, preparing and uh, the projects and see the plans and see the color. Um, this is something that I really missed during the pandemic, how to present the client with not only the 3Ds, but, you know, the, 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 the materials and, and how it's connected between the 3Ds and the materials is only for me as an interior designer. So. Can we do something that's a bit larger, you know, it's not only screen, but in a room that can be viewed by the audience. So that's my cup of tea for this one. 
for the um, for this uh, face to face connection. But Melvin, maybe you have something else that uh, maybe you can add up here about the face to face connection. Now you're mute. <laughs> Okay. Of course, I, I actually uh, we, we are we are in 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 ongoing discussion about this, and is is it the time now? I can share my my other screen, or uh, not, not yet, not yet. Okay, okay. Not, this is just a discussion. This is just um, something that that you see that clients uh, is also, uh, but let's now go to the uh, other session, which is. Fusion design and technology. So this is for you. Uh, you can start this discussion. So as we said before, it's about inclusivity. It should be integrated between the design and the technology and the flexibility. The flexibility is not like one point, but it's anywhere. We can, we can work from anywhere and, and can connect from anywhere. Yeah. But um, sometimes, as we said before, um, this can be done easy and it's uh, interactive and easy to be done. But sometimes people react differently. They don't know about the system. And so what you see is, is that now it's done well and what is something that you have done it, but it's difficult to use. And it's like left in a corner and no one is using it. And you always have to, to call the IT people just to use it. So can you tell us about maybe uh, some of this issue? What is now working and what is not? Okay, so uh, from, from our perspective, uh, if you're talking about uh, technology, uh, we, we, we have all those uh, high-tech uh, features, equipment, functionality, and even, you know, things that uh, every day I, I get, you know, what is that? New things, you know. Uh, every day we get surprised with the, the, the new equipment, with new technology, with new features. But but the thing is, uh, with those equipment, uh, with those capability, with those uh, features, the the question is, are we going to use it all? You know, are we going to use it uh, all the features in the same time? And another question would be, do, do we know how to use it, right? Let's say we, we, we have our Android or uh, iPhone, e EOS, uh, in our hand. but many people is using all the features. Uh, uh, it's, it's there, the capability is there, uh, the functionality is there, but sometimes on, people is only open the WhatsApp and email, that's it. They don't install the 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 uh, 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 fancy or uh, interesting application, or is there even though just a barcode reader? It's not every day that you use, right? So uh, the technology is there, the feature is there. Uh, the question is how we can you know um, utilize that uh, into one uh, one one uh, practicality that can can help us. In, in everyday life and how are we do we know how to use it all you know that's that's where if we are talking about corporate uh, 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 technology that's where uh, the, the system integrator uh, sets it uh, we, we, we are we, we, we can advise our customer uh, how to, to use it what is the feature? And we can help them to, to make use of the equipment uh, easily. So we, we simplify the use. So if we are uh, going to talk about uh, interior design and, and technology design, so it's a, a complete integration between the space and also the, the technology uh, uh, that is uh, designed, that is uh, applied. So this is very interesting. But this is a very, very, very interesting and continuous uh, topic that we, we always uh, need to, to discuss within the designer and also the, the technology expert, I believe. Okay. Do you, uh, now it's, yes, Stephen, please. If, if I can just um, elaborate on that, I think, you know, part of it is that uh, 
if if we get too complicated with things with the design, it becomes the the experts can use it and the rest of people can't. In our, our own office, um, we had so many different uh, stakeholders wanting uh, it to be able to do all sorts of things that complicated the system that half the time it doesn't work and people get frustrated instead of keeping it simple. The keep it simple is key to making these things work. But I think really when we're talking about moving forward and it's probably not the likes of, of Vega, but maybe it is, it's the likes of the, the um, providers who actually create the technology. Okay, we're doing um, whiteboarding. You know, you're doing brainstorming. So if you were face-to-face, -face, you'd go over to a whiteboard, you'd start putting stuff up. Now, if we have some people who are live on site and some people are virtual, how do they participate in that whiteboarding? How do they see actually what we're doing because of where the cameras are? Um, if you're doing a cooking lesson virtually, how do you smell things? Uh -huh. You know, so it's, it's, it's all these other things that if we really want that true human experience, we need the... Um, the makers of the technology start taking it forward um, beyond what we're doing today. Uh, years ago, uh, when I did a lot of um, rooms in Australia, one of our things to a client, and we usually use the CEO, um, we'd take him in a room we, that we had done and we'd say, here's the space. If you can't use the room within one minute, then we failed. And nine times out of 10, these, these, typically older gentlemen were able to use the room and this is before iphones this is before we had all that technology but the way we programmed it was intuitive and i think that's some of the things that we've forgotten is to make these things intuitive for people to use okay thanks Stephen. so now but but heather you're the one who's going to you know to i always like Stephen. you know Bunaila. i always yeah. i always like Stephen because uh steven design uh, a designer that is very open to his technology. So that's that's a very uh, interesting mix. I and, think. and I think I think Melvin, that that's sort of key to the success of spaces. Is that if a designer just designs a space and then Vega comes along and says, "Okay, we need this, we need that. We're just going to stick it here because that's the right spot for it." Yeah. Then there's no integration between the the design of the space the users of the space and the technology that's there. But if you look at the projects that we've worked on together, it's typically been an in, in integration between the two, thinking about the space from a technology standpoint from the very beginning, as well as the human experience aspect of it and yeah. thinking of them together, not separately. Yes, correct. It's the whole, it's the whole <laughs> system completely. Heather, what do you think that, that we can do because almost, all of my project, when it comes to technology, it's only the IT people who can do it, you know? Um, and, and we have like a team to call and, and to do it. Is there something else that, that you can help, help, you know, the overall staff to know, the staff that are working there to know about this technology? It's not about manual, it's not about mm. standard to, to know, but, mm. but what do you think about it, about this? Well, first of all, I have to say that I, I'm in complete agreement with um, some of the comments that were shared, uh, you know, by yourself, Ibu, uh, from Stephen and Melvin. I think um, two key success, or maybe three success factor in learning that technology really space is, um, you know, coming to what Stephen was saying is how intuitive is that technology being implemented? And secondly, it's actually from the very beginning when we're working with our designers, our interior designers or our architect um, and our client to really to understand what we are trying to address here. Often when a client or, uh, uh, you know, m mostly our client would be, you know, they're very smart these days within, in terms of what technology is available. Um, you know, it's easily accessible as well. And so they will have ideas on what they like to uh, be implemented into a workplace. My very first question when I ask them is, what would you like to use that for? Uh, why do you think that that would be an uh, interesting component into your space? And often they kind of would take a step back to think, um, well, actually, uh, this is what I like to do. And then this is where the conversation will start to go. And the other major component is the user experience. 
um, that I think is being shared with our panelists as well. And what I wanted to say is, um, you know, and I, and I kind of had this answer um, um, to one of the panel that I had joined recently. And I just want to reiterate that, um, you know, just at Vega Global, we're seeing um, our multinational corporation clients, education from the education industry as well as hospitality industry, that the client themselves are working continuously to within their organization um, to define their working model and their strategy. And this is in conjunction with, um, you know, workplace strategists uh, and our interior designers. Because um, often they will come up with the theme of how the client want to use the space. And as technologists, it is our job to work with uh, the designers and the client to then support them with the technology that is practical and usable within their space. And, you know, Stephen already shared some of those. And I think it is so important that we start to understand the, the key determining factor for this organization is how they want to get their employees community to be engaged and collaborate while working remotely. Um, you know, Steve also mentioned about the eye contact and what are the workspace, workplace of options available to this employee, you know, if, it's, if home office is not an option uh, and specifically in some parts of Asia and other parts of um, Africa, you know, we, if we talk about internationally, um, you know, when people's uh, home is not set up to perform productive work. So what we're seeing is that, um, you know, a, internationally for US, Europe, Middle East, and some parts of Asia Pacific, adaptation to uh, the different style of working, you know, hybrid or flexible working, you know, uh, it's easier if they're given the right technology. Um, you know, my, some organization have thought about and executed their uh, business continuity plan, um, you know, before COVID or even during COVID migration to cloud, um, you know, having a good headset uh, where they're at home, a good camera, um, you know, obviously access to stable Wi-Fi. You know, I think these days uh, we take it for granted. <laughs> um, you know, having uh, the, the hardware, so in terms of the laptop, desktop, and things like that, this will uh, make, make it easier uh, for people to have that uh, engagement and that um, uh, experience. And Ibonala, you were mentioning about how can I, uh, you know, be a bit more engaged when I'm opposite end uh, to, with, on the camera presenting or, you know, talking to my client. Um, you know, one of the technology that is available um, already is the voice tracking camera. So uh, often people like to, uh, when they're presenting, you know, like I like to use my hand a lot. Uh, and some people like to stand up and maybe move around a bit. Yes. So with the voice camera is actually following, say, following your voice uh, and then you're able to share the same experience uh, with the other uh, people on the other side. Um, so yeah, that, they are just some of my thoughts. So everything is positive. Any challenge? Everyone? Steven, maybe you first? Um. You know, I think the, the challenge in implementing a lot of this is always the budget. Um, and, you know, people have gone down to uh, the local store, Best Benki, wherever it is, and said, oh, I can get this for X. And I don't need something that big and on and on. And so then they complain it doesn't work right because they're not using commercial grade. They're using consumer grade. They're undersizing screens. They're not thinking about the content that's being shared. Um, all those things. I think you know Heather talked about the the follow me cameras, which is great if you're in a big room space. But if you're working from home or something like that, that's a lot harder. Um, it, it's really how do we get this this connectivity, this human connectivity between people? We got the virtual connectivity. We've got that down. You know, it's been around for a couple of decades now in terms of video conferencing. Um, I mean, the first video conference was in 1927. Um, you know, think about that. That was a long time ago. So it's not like this is new technology. It's just that, you know, in the last 20 years, we, we started off with uh, Skype and uh, actually before that, it was uh, See You, See Me that uh, Apple developed that went bust. Um, but, you know, it's really thinking about how do we take it further than that? How do we get this interactivity virtually that you would have in real life and, and Nyla you talked about like sample boards and all those touchy-feely things that you don't get when we're doing this I mean we've we've been presenting in our our projects 
um, have always been offshore. And, you know, we've had to reinvent the way we do things with clients who are thousands of miles away from us and we don't have the opportunity to meet them. Um, whereas before you go there with your sample boards and your renderings and you take it out. And even if you had the, the PowerPoint, you still had the touchy feely things that clients still want. Now this is specific to interior designers, but even for other things, you know, if you're um, selling a product, um, that's a tangible thing. People want to touch and feel it. How do you do that when it's virtual? Um, I'm just looking at some of these, these questions uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, from the panelists, uh, from the, the, the audience, what challenge do you encounter in the incorporation of new check when designing spaces? As I mentioned, it's the budget. It's, it's people's understanding and expectations. Um, today, the percentage spent on technology of an overall fit out is much greater than it used to be because of the cost of technology and the prevalence of it. You know, years ago, you had a portable data projector and maybe a portable screen that you took from room to room when you needed it because it wasn't required for most meetings. Today, almost every meeting you have, even before COVID, had something being presented electronically. Uh, so we've got to think about that and the budget percentages haven't really changed and the allocation of that. Um, and when we're doing new tech and, and for years, I've always been pushing new tech. And so Melvin's seen it on H3i where it was like, hey, we want a circular LED screen. And he's like, what? <laughs> right, and, and, yeah. and we came to it. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, if I think back for DDB, um, the ad agency, you know, it was the first video wall in an office in Australia. Um, that hotel room of the future was the first um, live VC call from a convention center in Australia and the first flat screen in Australia because we brought it in from overseas um, to, to push the technology. And I've constantly been pushing it, but you've got to have the partners like Vega or others that also have the experience, otherwise it's going to fail. Um, because if I just went to um, someone off the street who's a supplier of uh, equipment, so if I went to Samsung, you know, they'd say, yeah, we got a screen for you, but who knows if the rest of it's going to work. You need the, the right integrator working together to make sure that this is going to be a success and they're doing the back end to make sure that, that it's working right. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Uh, anyone wants to add up to Stephen's? Yeah, Heather? I just want, yes, thanks, Ibunana. I think it's important to understand, um, you know, and I agree with Stephen about the budget. Um, mm. The, the, the biggest challenge I think for us is actually being uh, engaged upfront earlier in the process. Uh, often when, a, um, when the client is determining the real estate, the, the space, uh, often they're looking at the transaction part of it. And once the commercial obligation is complete um, over to project execution, when they're defining the timeline and the, the cost and the scope, that tend to get uh, squashed. Uh, it, so, um, you know, understanding really what the purpose of um, the technology being used in the space, is it just something to, uh, for, for content display, does it need to be interactive, do we need to write on it uh, uh, on the screen or, you know, many things like that, that needs to take into consideration and yes, that will actually add into uh, the, the budget. Um, and I think as manufacturer that uh, with our suppliers that we're working with, um, they are working to uh, look at the actual implementation and the usage and how intuitive that is. Um, so the challenge would be is really around um, how can we get earlier engagement, uh, you know, together with the client. And, you know, we're seeing more and more of this exercise now together uh, with our um, companies. Uh, so with Vega and working with many interior designers uh, upfront process, and we start to see the reward and the fruit uh, that is carrying through um, for uh, the client. Uh, that, that's where the value comes. Okay. It's, uh, it's for me, I think the, the challenge is uh, the understanding and concern. So of uh, uh, throughout our, our experience is uh, let's say if if we are we 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 meet with the the, the customer or together with the 
let's say interior designer. Uh, if we meet to, we meet the customer together with Stephen, it's it's very easy <laughs> because because Stephen knows that the technology will enhance uh, you know the, the design and it 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 has a, a complete a system complete solution, but sometimes uh, the understanding is not there, you know uh, that. Uh, I have this one example. Uh, so a week ago, right? Probably like a week ago, I I, I tried to to buy a washing machine, right? Uh, it says uh, the, the the one is the price is about around four million or five million if I'm not mistaken, and the other one is eight million, right? So three million difference, but. Uh, the, the 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 five million said that uh, it will take you to wash uh, around uh, is it 50, 59, 59 minutes or or one point three uh, one one half hours, but the other one the, the eight million one the bigger one it it takes only thirty nine minutes, so I was thinking if I bought if I spend more, uh, three million more, but I will have like half an hour more in my life. I can do more with one and a half hours, right? And if you multiply that into like a week, how many hours do I have? Like if you multiply that a month, how many hours do I have? Like probably I can start my hobby, like probably new hobby doing, doing what? With three million, right? Investment, three million. I think the understanding and concern that how the technology can be able to you know enhance your life, uh, enhance your design, right? So that that kind of understanding and also the understanding of how what what you want to to do with the with the with, with the with the space with the system. So that's that's where uh, a system integrator or or technology integrator like us we 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 would like to discuss with our customer and also we discuss with the interior designer or architect to, to find what is uh, their, their, what do you call, wildest imagination of design, you know, so we can support them and we can create that, uh, create that throughout technology. And also concern on, on the budget. You know, I think budget will depend, uh, it was uh, substituting uh, on, the, uh, on the function, on the time, and also is it uh, regarding the, on, the, on the capex or the opex? So I think that's that's the main challenge uh, for us. Uh, I think uh, understanding, I think understanding, and concern. Yeah. Melvin, I think you know you touched on it where it's about the experience. So there's no point in having a client come along after the designs reached a certain point and say, oh, let's just put something up there because you don't understand the intent of that. Because we look at it, what's the total experience? So as a designer, you should be thinking about a client walks in, um, a potential employee or their own employees, how do they experience the space and how is that technology being used? There's no point in having a great video wall in a yeah. reception space, they don't have the content to put Correct. up there. Correct. Um, so you've got to think about it holistically. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe I have a say also about that as an interior designer, um, it's not about how we approach the client, but we need also to approach the designer. We're in the pandemic situation, we know that technology now is important. So one way is that also for the designer to, to understand the new technology, what is new. Uh, it's not that every time we, we see and we Google the website, what's new in technology. Uh, <laughs> or in material or so on. So if it's something that also can be uh, learned by, uh, by designers. And also that when we learn that, so that when we speak to the client and with this new technology, we put it inside our, our, our proposal or presentation to the client. It's not only about boards and material and 3Ds. We're also talking about the technical issues there. So if we have a tools to help us and then we can show it to the client that will be like let's integrate technology to design now now from the beginning 
and and then about budget yeah that that's your part melvin yeah. to talk to the client and get it <laughs> done you know so we're helping you <laughs> do the technology but for the budget it's your part <laughs> <laughs> However, I, I think, you know, to be realistic, if, if the designer is leading the budget side, they've got to be realistic about putting together or putting aside a realistic amount of money for their vision of technology. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fair to Melvin to say, hey, you got to work it out or get more money from them. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, so the, the project that we're currently working on together, um, we were given the total budget. And we had to figure out how to spend it. And we knew that technology was a big part of the experience that we were looking to create. So we made sure that we had uh, enough money in there to do that. And uh, it was still tough. Um, but, you know, we, we got there in the end. Um, and, you know, that, that's all part of it. It's bringing the clients on the journey. But as a designer, trying to figure out what's really needed and not be frivolous with things that aren't required for that particular client you know it's, it shouldn't be ego driven oh i want this i want that i'm going to put it in when the client um someone talked about it you know it's going to be the white elephant sitting there that nobody uses um because it was driven by you instead of the client needs yeah i think also you're right uh, steven sometimes when we're in a project this uh, issue is also coming from the it people or the client and we're given but for now on, I think we need to, to, to also be together to put it inside the design and, and not to say this is, wow, this is a good, but what is best for the client? So the designer yeah. should know also about the system and the specification, integration and so on. Okay, so now we are having, I think we have to stop the discussion and start the Q&A. Um, I think there are uh, two questions. Uh, it's about, it's Andri. And um, she's uh, asking about two questions, but let's answer one. This is Andri, since one of the solutions related to IoT and maybe cloud. I face many end users still reluctant to use clouds. How do you convince to them, to the end user to use it? Any solution? Uh, Pat Nila, maybe I'll attempt to, um, to help facilitate that question. Yes, please. Thank you. And thank you, Andre, uh, for your question. Great question. Um, I think one of the biggest challenge and the reluctance from the end users is actually uh, the IT security uh, behind uh, the cloud and IoT solutions. And often I get questions like this too from the end users. Um, with some of the uh, client uh, uh, network infrastructure uh, is quite um, stringent in the way that they uh, worry about cyber security and things like that. So that's actually a key component we need to address. Um, I won't deep dive into a lot of that details. I'm happy to share that with you separately, but I think that would be one of the uh, key element where is stopping them to advance uh, their strategy around migration to cloud. Um, and often, uh, depending on the country uh, where, where the company is looking at their uh, IT strategy moving into the cloud migration, uh, they often have to think about where that cloud is. So obviously we have the Microsoft Azure cloud and the Google and um, Amazon and, and, and things like that. So we just have to think about and be mindful of, um, you know, obviously in China, there's, um, you know, other uh, cloud uh, uh, platform that can be used as well. So we've just got to be mindful as to when we're implementing for our client, where, where this sits and where they are. Um, often with the IoT solution these days, um, that's when we talked about machine learning and also the built-in what they call edge computing. Um, again, I don't want to go too technical, but that's where um, the security is sit within uh, the device. So that can be isolated um, and not need to plug into the client's uh, infrastructure and the network. So if we can address that uh, key component, then I'm sure uh, your end user will be uh, a bit more uh, acceptable and accommodating uh, into thinking about their uh, cloud migration strategy and the implementation of IoT solutions. Okay. Thanks, Heather. Um, I think there's another question, anonymous. So um, she's asking, who are, 
who how well do you think organization adopting and incorporating the use of new technology technology in the everyday uh, maybe i can ask uh, what kind of company who's who's doing it right now um are we saying not the government uh is it the bmn please steven so so i think you know the, 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 it's a good question and the and as you say it's about what type of company so if we look at a lot of global corporates um you know they've got huge uh, teams globally who are looking at how to leverage things how to really move them forward so we're looking we're working with one of the banks right now where they're really forward thinking about how do we create uh the work from home uh the virtual office iot and so on with their internal um and so they're there we're working with a, a tech company as well um and while they have the technology to showcase to their clients they are still from a um work from home attitude now they we want everyone in the office that's mm. their their thought process uh, and there's various reasons why. And then we're working with another uh, global manufacturer where they're looking at how to embrace technology. But again, because they're doing a lot of R&D and a lot of it's hands-on, it can't be done remotely. So they're using the technology, they're just using it physically in the workplace, not virtually as well. Uh, the virtual is only happening between teams in uh, corporate uh, locations. Um, again, because of security and so on. I think when you get to the smaller organizations, so you know they're not global; they're either they're local organizations, maybe spread across the country, or they're even smaller. They're just you know a small organization that has uh, grown up over the years, still privately owned in many cases. Most of them probably aren't there because they don't have the bandwidth and the financial width to really embrace a lot of the technology that's happening in terms of creating the virtual office. Okay, what about you, uh, Melvin? Any clients from Indonesia that's... Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, like, like Steven said, that uh, sometimes the, a smaller company or, or mid-sized company will, will not be aware on the importance of the the technology that is uh, necessary uh, right now because of uh, uh, then again it's because of the understanding of the the information that they are they don't don't have uh, so they they don't think that uh, too uh, for thinking like like uh, uh, Stephen uh, customer because uh, because normally people will will tend to to settle with 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 what they are with what they have done, uh, you know, every day. So they think they don't think up they don't think out how the the new way of doing things, but it, which one is uh, which is better than 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 today, you know. So the the comfort zone is there sometimes. So they don't want to you know change. So I think I think that's the challenge, the understanding, and also yeah, uh, the 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 reluctant to 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 change on the. That, that's the that's the bear thing. Okay, so mostly you're, what we're saying is that it's mostly like multinational companies, yeah. regional standard uh, to to apply. So those are the one that using this kind of technology. Well, PR Pak, you have a lot of homework to get all those, <laughs> those <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> private phones uh, company. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think we have time for. Um, it's only 10 minutes left, but Melvin is going to present another one. So let me wrap up and then um, and then we can go to this uh, to Melvin uh, last presentation. So um, let me let me summarize here uh, that for technology, there are so many issues that need to be resolved and discussed. There is so many things. And it's not only about working place. So this is why us as an interior designer, we should acknowledge the changes that's coming and understand the new ways of living, of working. And for us is to be innovative, to be creative, willing to learn, 
about other scope related to interior design, like this new technology. It's on how, it's on where, it's on when. And um, later on, it's not only the workplace, because Pam Melvin will explain that this technology can be anywhere. It can be in retail, it can be on healthcare. So maybe Pam Melvin, please. Okay. Go, do, go your roadmap launching. <laughs> okay. Uh, one moment. Uh... Is that sharing? Yes, it's showing. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think this is uh, end of my, uh, end part of my slide. Uh, so I think this is a very 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 uh, fruitful discussion. Um, we are here with uh, Stephen, a very famous interior designer, which I really, really, you know, a fan on, on the design. It's always amazing, always, uh, uh, what do you call, catchy, re refresh. We, we've done many works with, uh, with Stephen that it's impressive, uh, amazing. While uh, Heather is our uh, digital workspace uh, director, which is very, very experienced uh, in, in property as well. And you know, Bunela, Heather used to work in Indonesia for two years. Oh, you know? <laughs> so okay, I, I believe she understands Bahasa Indonesia, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so Heather has is, is been a very, a, a very important for us to, to, to show us the, the, the future of the technology and the workspace. So uh, she's been like a guru for us uh, regionally. So it's amazing. And also Matthew, also Matthew had used to work in Indonesia. So a lot of people always work in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah. And, and Matthew's background is a, uh, what do you call, uh, in, uh, a system integration, just like me. Uh, so, so Matthew understand that the market, so, and he's, he's very experienced and, and on, on the, on the management side, he's, he's also very experienced. So, I think uh, to, to discuss with you, Bunela, and all the interior designer, and also Bunela, uh, also very experienced interior uh, designer. And I think it is important uh, for us to continuously to have uh, this kind of discussion. So space technology to find the right solutions, the right uh, you know, philosophy, the right principle of the design, the whole design, like uh, Stephen said, is 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 don't 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 think clusters, just the space, just the table, just the color, just the wall. But let's talk about the whole design uh, as a complete whole of design, right? So that's the, the, the there's a, a fitting out uh, portion there. There's an MEP. There's a technology there. So let's let's think about the whole design uh, to find the best user experience. So. This is a continuous discussion uh, between the, uh, the inter designer and also the te technology expert to find the, the right concept or formula for, for the space. So we have this continuous discussion with, uh, uh, that hosted with uh, Nadia Angita, our sales manager uh, for, from Vega Technology Indonesia, and also happens to be the AFIXA Women's Council Indonesian leader. Uh, and also together with Peter, our business manager, He's the UCS, UCC expert, uh, the technology expert, and he's, he's my Wikipedia, actually. <laughs> he's my Wikipedia, he's my, my, my Google Translate. Sometimes when I talk to, uh, uh, together with, with engineers and, and then, you know, I will do this to Peter. Hey, well, what is he saying? <laughs> you know, so he's, he's, he's the one that, you know, um, can, can, can help us to understand more about the technology. And Peter is very brilliant to translate from the technology language into human common common human language. I would say, right? So, and also Bunela, uh, also we we is the, the 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 host on the on the on the uh, discussion, the expert on internet designer. So this is the roadmap roadmap that we are going to have uh, July. We are going to talk about hologram, augmented reality, VR, and interactive uh, content brand awareness until February 2022. 20, we have the roadmap. So every month, 
we will have this uh, discussion. We will have you to, to be brainstormed together with us. So we will have you together with us um, open our mind and find the right, the best uh, design all together. So August healthcare and pandemic strategy, uh, September office technology series, office building analytic people tracking, October office technology series, public space on November, December hotel apartment residential, January on, on education, pandemic strategy, and February digital transportation location based service. So that's the roadmap. We would like you to join us on the discussion. And this is a very interesting discussion, I would, I would say, and we will invite more of the, uh, what do you call, rock star, like Bunaila and, and Steven there uh, on the discussion. Thank you so much, Bunaila. Okay, thanks, Melvin. Yeah, uh, we just talked about a bit of, of the technology and we mostly today talked about uh, the workplace really, but there is so much to be talked about, discussed, to be for me to learn about the other uh, industry than corporate. So thank you, Melvin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Matthew, for all your knowledge and your experience and of this technology together with design. So let me close up this session. And as we said, thank you again for Vega Technology global and Indonesia, and for Stephen from AIDAS Interior, but mostly for all participants who joined today and to this event, Mayantara Jak ID 2021. And make sure to stay tuned and to subscribe to Mayantara YouTube channel. Uh, you can see it again, we play our session. And also go to Mayantara Jak ID Locket for other session. We still have like four today, later today and follow our Instagram account, HDII Jakarta. The upcoming next session is uh, at 1 p.m. It's how to return to a better work and learning environment. It's going to be presented by Working by Fifere, and the speaker will be Elizabeth Chen from Steelcase, Ambroise Dotwil from Steelcase, Binga Suseno from CDA, Maitri Vidya Mutiara, and Tri Hikmawati as the moderator. So again, thank you so much for thank all you. speakers. Thank you. Uh, and thank you. I hope everyone from the audience uh, uh, enjoyed this session. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.